Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, I will be talking about Daykim or Domain Keys Identified Mail. Uh, this is one of the authentication protocols that's used to uh, identify email sender, uh, especially the domain of the sender. I will also be showing you how can you set up the Kim on uh, the Microsoft 365 side for your tenant. It creates a private key and a public key. The private key is used to sign all the outgoing emails from the, let's say in this case, uh, anyone in the organization. Uh, if we enable DKIM for this tenant, this Microsoft tenant, if Adele sends any email outside, her emails will be signed by a private key which would be visible in that email header. Uh, more about email header later on, I might make a video, but just know that it's the private key is used to sign the outgoing emails. And there is a public key, which is on the DNS server. So when you have a tenant it and uses a domain, in my example, I have added my custom domain, uh, the techies.ca, yours could be something else uh, yours could be the name of your company uh, so yeah there are DNS records for these on the DNS provider so let me just log into my DNS provider real quick and I'll, I'll, I'll clarify what I mean uh, my, I bought this domain from INOS which is a domain registrar when you buy a public domain you get the name and you get the DNS okay so that's my domain here let me just close all these ads yours could be go called GoDaddy get to get out of here and go to my domain and go to DNS so yours will also have a DNS option and you can see these are the records that I was talking about so this particular domain has all these DNS records. When you set up DKIM, it generates a private key, which is used to sign the emails. It generates the public key, which is on your DNS, on the public DNS. So when an email is sent out, uh, the recipient mail server will query the DNS server for that public key. And then if they match, if they match, then the email is delivered to the recipient. If they don't match, then it's sent to spam on the recipient's uh, mail system. So that is a very short uh, overview of what DKIM is and how the DKIM authentication works. Now let's look at how we can enable DKIM on the Microsoft 365 side. So I am currently logged in to my tenant here with the global admin account. Uh, I'm gonna go to security portal by clicking here because that's where the option is. And once it's loaded on the left, we will look for email and collaboration and under that we'll choose policies and rules. Go to threat policies and we will click on email authentication settings uh, we will have two options arc and dkim we don't use i don't i've never used arc so i don't know about it we'll use the dkim that's what we're concerned here and it will list all the domains you have in your tenant uh, you can see there is the default on microsoft which you get when you sign up for the tenant and this is the custom domain Yours would be something else. Mine is called the techies.ca and you can see it's disabled at the moment. Uh, there, and it also says the CNAME is missing. So CNAME is again a type of DNS record. All these are records and you can see there are already some DSC name record for my public domain. All right, so we will click on here now we can just go ahead and try enabling it, but it's just going to throw us an error. Uh, what, it, what it's doing in the background, it's, it's trying to find, it's, it's querying the domain, the DNS 
for this domain and look it's trying to look for the records uh, which are these two so it's looking for the CNAME records on the DNS host which in my case is this okay so since we don't have these here it's that is why it's not gonna let us enable it so what we'll have to do is we'll have to manually add these records the CNAME records on uh, our domain DNS alright so I have I already have these copied over in a notepad so I'm just gonna bring it here so so these are the values which we will be adding to our domains DNS so let's go ahead and do that we'll click on add record we'll pick CNAME uh, so asking for the host name if we go back uh, it says the host name should be called sector one dot domain key uh, so we'll paste that here it points to points to address is supposed to be this so we'll copy that and we will paste it here we can leave the time to live as default we'll hit save and that is the first entry and you can see there it is that's where that's that's added now uh, same way we will add the second sector value so we'll copy that go back to our DNS click on add record pick C name host name we'll copy the value paste it here make sure it looks good we'll hit save and that's it so this is now added to our domains DNS and now if we try go go enabling it it's gonna throw us an error because I just added the record um, and you can see it says client error uh, it's missing CNAME record don't exist please publish the following which we already did so we will have to wait for at least an hour because the TTL was one hour. Uh, it could be, it could take longer than that, or it can be, you know, faster than that. But we will have to wait. Let me just try enabling again. If it works, that would be crazy. Yeah. Okay. So it's not gonna work. I'm just gonna pause the video, and uh, I'm not gonna wait here. Just trying to get this enabled for you guys just trust me okay just trust me it's gonna work uh, so yeah that's how you set up a uh, dkim for your custom domain uh, setting this up helps uh, the emails that are sent out from within your org organization to outside it uh, it's it's good it's good if you can set it up Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any question, any if you run into issues while doing this by yourself, please ask me in the comments. And uh, yeah, take care.